Well, remember, we always talk about this in terms of three specific actions that you can take. We told you to stay socially distanced because the viral droplets don't travel more than six feet. That's why we say stay with the outside of six feet of each other. That's why we do that, so you don't catch it. We told you to wear masks because if you actually have the infection, if you put on a mask to a high probability, that prevents you from transmitting it to others. So you stay away, you keep other people from getting it by putting on the mask, and you get vaccinated so that you don't die from the disease. You're absolutely right. People can be vaccinated and otherwise do all of the right things, and they can still get infected. However, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to die. All of this is about risk reduction. We want to lower the risk as much as possible so that if you catch COVID, you're less likely to die from it. Let's talk about this new variant, BA5 COVID variant. More transmissible than the others, right? And I hear that some people are getting even more sick than the other variants. Well, actually, as a rule, the all of the Omicron subvariants, and, and this is one of the Omicron, remember we had Delta back in the day, but now we're in the Omicron category. So all of those are more transmissible, but between BA5 and the ones that came before it, they're not more transmissible per se than BA4, for example, but what they are is they're more likely to evade our immune systems. So the virus is tr still trying to figure out a crafty way to avoid what it is we're trying to do to get it out of our system. So that's where we are right now. So most people who are getting this, thankfully, are getting milder infections, but the virus is still um, finding a way to infect us all. But there are simple precautions, as we've already said, that really allow us to avoid the worst of um, outcomes because Still, four to 500 people a day are still dying from COVID-19, so we should be concerned. So let's talk quickly about the Paxlovid, because you should take that within the first five days of symptoms. That's exactly right. So the idea here is to get it before a significant enough bolus of the virus is built up inside of you that is going to cause the worst possible set of outcomes. So this is an example of where we tell people, um, don't just stand there, do something, and the specific do something that we want you to do is to come in and get evaluated. It's perfectly okay to get a negative evaluation. Don't feel like you're wasting your time. Don't feel like you're wasting our time. We want to evaluate you because, like I said, there are still 500 people across the country who are dying from this every single day, and those individuals are the ones who are waiting when they could have come in, gotten the medicine, and further reduced that risk. And there are over 200,000 people a day who are um, still catching this across the country. There's also a new vaccine, Novavax. A little bit different than Pfizer and the, um, what's the other one, Pfizer? Moderna, Moderna thank uh, you, because I, yes. you know, I knew this. I know this off the top of my head. But it's a new one, and it's a little bit different. It's not uh, with the mRNA, right? It's made a little That's bit differently. Really that's right. It's, it's one of the more historic types of preparations. And to the viewing audience, I would actually respectfully suggest that that's a distinction without a difference for the minor public, for the public, general public. But if people are concerned about the speed and the new technology that has arisen, we now have a more traditional type of technology that they may have been familiar with in the past that they can feel more comfortable with. The bottom line in all of this is if you do any of them, you're going to reduce your risk significantly. And that's the goal. Talk to your physician about what might work for you specifically. Let's not forget the children. They should be vaccinated as well Absolutely. because those, those vaccines are available right now. Yeah, that's an excellent point to bring up. And, and the thing about the children is that we know that they're carriers of so many different types of um, illness. And by getting them vaccinated, the goal really is just to reduce the bolus of the virus in the general population because the more it hangs around, even if it's hanging around in kids who are less likely to die, then if it's hanging around, it's more likely to continue to mutate and this thing will just continue on and on and on. We're in the summer. This isn't respiratory season per se, but you know that's how we get at this. We have to get everybody um, as safe as possible so it won't continue to spread and mutate. Let's not forget about monkeypox because that's something people are a little afraid of now too. We've had several cases here in Illinois. How do we avoid it? Should we be getting vaccines? Should we be as afraid of it as we are uh, as we are of COVID? No. Um, people in general really don't need to be either that aware of it or afraid of it. And I say that with a certain amount of respect and hesitancy for um, the disease itself. But the CDC has actually at this point reported about 1,400 cases of monkeypox in the United States and no deaths since the outbreak began in May. 
So this is something that generally, if you want to avoid it, just engage in routine health measures. It's important for you to know that this doesn't come from monkeys. The reservoir is actually in rodents, specifically rodents in Central and West Africa. And it's just like other things. It's a flu-like illness. You'll get a fever. You'll feel bad. You may get some large lymph nodes in your neck or under your armpits. And then you get might get a rash that looks like chicken pox. So working backwards, anybody out there that's getting a chicken pox rash has large lymph nodes and gets a fever, you might want to go ahead and get evaluated. But one of the more important considerations is just know your risk. The large number of individuals that are getting monkeypox appear to be men who are having um, sexual relations with other men, and that's not excluding anyone else from getting it. But this isn't something that is prevalent enough or deadly enough to be especially concerned with. And if I may, there's one other pretty significant point. I said that if you get this type of rash, you might want to rush in and get evaluated. And there's a very important reason for that. One of the nice things about this, if you can classify it as such, is that the incubation time is relatively long. It takes one or two weeks for this to manifest into a meaningful disease. Well, in that interim, if you actually got diagnosed, evaluated and diagnosed, you can still get a vaccine during that time frame, or you could otherwise get treated with antiviral medications that would really eliminate the virus and um, make you better. So this is something about which you should be aware, but not necessarily afraid. And quickly, Dr. Sterling, you do want to mention Mental Health Month, don't you? Don't I? I sure do. Uh, my goodness. I, I just want people to begin by understanding that what you're feeling is not um, abnormal. You know, between 2000 and 2020, the U.S. suicide rate has increased by 30 percent. So we're going to take this serious. And actually, we're now dealing with the highest recorded rate in just about 30 years. So mental health leading to depression and suicide are things that we really should be concerned about. And, you know, as these things go, the categories of people that are most at risk for adverse outcomes from these things are those that have health problems that become overwhelming, job problems that are overwhelming, mm. and relationship problems that are overwhelming. Right. But more than anything else, I would just ask the viewer and audience just to lock arms and have somebody who is an accountability partner or a friend or a relative or loved one who checks on you, ask you, are you okay? Definitely. And encourages yeah. you to have right. strong mental health. Dr. Jeffrey Sterling from Simcoe, always nice to have you. So informative. Thank you, sir. Be safe, be well. Good to be with you. Be safe, be well. Thank you.